We've got a treat for you on Classic Next. It's a brand spanking new episode of our show, Cheap Seats, from our fourth season. Tonight, we take you to the quite believable world of unbelievable sports. Watch as we show you adult men treating broom ball like it's the most important thing in their lives. Actually, that's the theme of the whole show. Grown men who take their riding in soapbox derby cars, reenacting medieval battles, hacky sack, and broom ball more seriously than they take their own families. And that's why it's unbelievable. Unbelievable Sports is on Cheap Seats, and it's on ESPN Classic, and it's next. Cheap Seats! Listen to this rock and song. It's 27 seconds long. This is our new Cheap Seats theme. In season four, we have a dream. To teach the children how to laugh with the help of our great staff. Going farther than Ron Parker. Comedy was never darker. Ain't no time to be a slouch. Join the boys here on the couch. They'll take you on a nasty ride. Keep in the vault of U.S. pride. Cheap Seats! Doing it! USA! America! Hey everybody, welcome to Cheap Seats. You give us half an hour, we'll give you the world. Although the show's really only 23 minutes long, not counting the credits and the graphics, it's actually only about 20 minutes. Yeah, in that case, we're not gonna be able to give you the world. It was kind of a lofty promise anyway. What we can give you though is our take on an episode of Unbelievable Sports. Which in terms of giving you the world is the equivalent of giving you Nicaragua. Managua, get up and get ready, cause here's what to look for. It's what to look for, it's what to look for. Pay attention to the complete misnomer that is unbelievable sports. The four sports they show are actually all incredibly believable, and they all have one thing in common, an unbelievable tool of a host. Also keep an eye on said host's facial hair continuity or complete lack thereof. I don't want to say the show was filmed out of order over a long period of time, but Dan Moriarty's goatee undergoes more changes than the cheap seats time slot. Are we even on anymore? I don't know. But in case we are, let's get to the unbelievability. At Unbelievable Sports, we're proud to bring you the coolest sports in America. And I've got the sloppy slacker wardrobe to prove it. Debut a brand new one. Now, you've all seen soapbox derby racers going down hills the size of this monster. No, we haven't. Back, relax, and watch the brand new high speed uh, Dan, version. we got a car coming. You want to wrap it up? One. Hey, it's the Million Hick March. Derby Day in Dayton, Ohio. Back Look out, Hitler stash! Fox Derby became one of the first ways a regular kid could get a real taste for racing. Unlike the irregular kids who raced all the time back then. Of the opening day. Yeah! He's top of the line and hey, it's my bed from growing up. From growing up, shut up. Purely a big kid's toy. Then why are they dressed like Power Rangers? With hair trigger steering and top speeds in excess of 100 miles an hour. There are carbon-based life forms and there's adrenaline-based life forms. Me, I'm a Klingon. Freeze it. Does he have an action figure of himself posing with him? That's not an action figure. It's a gravity Formula One wood gnome guarding the forest and keeping it safe from dudes like him. Like sticking your head take the old off the shelf. Gravity racing is a simple proposition, really. First one to the bottom of the hill wins. What? That makes no sense. Builder Roger Hickey points out Hickey leaving his mark on the sport. Easier said than done. The thing about gravity racing is the driver has all the Is it me or does Gary from 30 something need to go back on the Accutane? The most money to buy, you know, all the trick items. Yeah, trick items, like an engine. Is this the video that plays when someone chooses a ZZ Top song at a karaoke bar? Into South America. And then what he wanted Shades to do necessary. the show wanted to drive the car. Idiot. I told him that, you know, when he starts, that he has to go very slow. So or slowly. To the steering and the braking. And what happened was he pushed the handle the wrong way and the car Idiot. went into the side of the mountain and just virtually exploded. Oh, so by virtual explosion, you mean he rolled the car. Low angle, still looks small. Roger and his teammates have spent the tapered past jeans. Years Unbelievable! The downhill competition of the year here in San Dimas, California. San Dimas, excellent! Wild stallions! And to the stands reveals that Roger is. Hickey chicks pushing back the women's movement. As expected, Roger cruises into the finals, where he will face teammate Dwight Garland as Wait, well as Wait, they have teams for this? I want to be on the Hickey Chicks. Running fast all day, but even he realizes that the final heat will most likely be a battle for second place. Way to undersell it, Moriarty. But I'll be right up behind him. 
I'm definitely going to lose, but only by a small margin. As the final four wait for the last race of the day, each man must mentally prepare. For this? Where gravity rules, precision is the name of the game. I thought gravity was the name of the game. I thought speed was the name of the game. And the guy that makes the least amount of mistakes wins every single time. Wait, I thought the first one down the hill wins. Go! Wait, 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 my car won't start! Battle for perfection. As the drivers enter the first turn, the hickey chicks fall asleep. Followed by Dwight, Bob, and Al at the rear of the Shaking the camera doesn't make them look like they're going any faster. Easily evaporate if he makes even one mistake. Tighten Dwight's draft. Freeze it. Fans or random people trying to cross the road? Bob is looking for the right opportunity to slingshot by for the pass. Although he should be thinking about how he's going to put his kids through college on a soapbox or salary. Bob must attempt to pass now or it will be too late. Just like it's too late for him to save his relationship with the girlfriend who left him because he, quote, loves that damn car more than you love me, end quote. Wildly. On this day, at least, Roger Hickey remains on top. Of the Hickey chicks. Thanks! I don't know how they finished behind me, but it didn't matter. Gravity! As long as they finish behind me. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the Hickey Chicks for a second. Gotta say, I'm still shocked at what the Hickey Chicks said about President Bush during wartime. Me too, but what I wanna talk about is the dude hanging out with the Chicks. The jeans and no shirt look just makes no sense at all. If it's so hot that you don't need a shirt, how about throwing on some shorts? And I'll bet you anything, he went out to the concession stand and did a set of 30 push-ups right before he sat down. More unbelievableness after this. And I'll bet you they were concentration push-ups. Oh, that is so He handy. put the diamond down and started to just work those tries. Hey, welcome back to Cheap Seats, where we're watching an episode of Unbelievable Sports, a show featuring things that are neither unbelievable nor sports. Case in point, this next segment, which is all about footbag. Now, footbag actually sounds like it could be interesting if it weren't just a fancy name for hacky sack. I do have to say, though, that I much prefer the word footbag to hacky sack. In fact, I think footbag is the perfect curse word replacement for the real F word. I mean, here on Cheap Seats, we're not allowed to say but we can say mother footbagger or what the footbag. Get the footbag off my footbag and property. Um, you don't own property. Hey, footbag you, you footbag and footbagger. Okay, then maybe you do own some property. Footbag and a right I do. All right, let's just get back to the unbelievable sports. Footbag it, let's do it. Footbag is a game so easy, anyone can play. Way to belittle the sport. Even me. Way to but belittle yourself. Special to kick their way to the top at the World Footbag Championships. Trucking. The game of footbag first Short charts. in the 70s, along with flower power and lava lamps. And stepping on babies' heads. Gone, but footbag is still here, and it's not a fad anymore. Yep, now, it's gone from fad to forgotten. Is this footage from Moriarty's bachelor party? ...father of footbag. He invented the sport. At least that's what it says on his business cards. ...in uh, Oregon City, Oregon, and Mike was kicking a little beanbag. I mean, for all intents and purposes, it was a beanbag. And it still is. Uh, ...obtained uh, a patent on it and... Just... So you stole Mike's idea. Montreal is the host city for this year's World Footbag Championships. Is this part of the Montreal Comedy Festival? It should be. ...and footbag net. Most people are familiar with freestyle. And by most people, we mean three people. Footbag net game. Game played over a net is uh, a spectacular display. Oh, they left something off his title. Perfect. The man everyone is trying to catch this year in the singles competition is Kenny Schultz. I saw it on TV. And Not on the TV. Kicked one or tried it, I was hooked. Well, making friends, training, or breaking records. Big kick it. Short charts not included. Back. Kenny has participated at every... Nothing lonely or sad about this. Kenny was a world record holder. His name was found in Guinness Book of World Records. Under most consecutive hours of life wasted. Most of the tricks that are seen today. This is where you get the biggest crowds. We're talking WNBA-sized crowds. And, and uh, I'm, I'm usually a good big game performer. So yep, you and Pujols. Kenny's opponent is Montreal hometown favorite Sebastian Verde. Of course, Verde is a Spanish word that means not good enough for soccer. Sebastian comes to this match keenly aware of an amazing fact. There's a city called Rome on every continent. A finals event in 12 years. Yeah, kick it. Jumps out to an early lead. Hey! You've been footbag. 
Kenny comes back to tie, and they go toe to toe to score points. Fantastic. With a great drop shot, Sebastian. That was not a drop shot, nor was it particularly great. Oh, foot bang. Then, in an incredibly. Uh, can we go with a wide shot here? Kenny stays alive by muscling his way to a 15 10 victory. Muscling? They're kicking a bean bag. The first game, I hit a lot of bags out of bounds for no reason. Why would you do that? No reason. I hit a lot better in the second game. He served a lot out, frankly. Footbag Ed Hockley with the call. Kenny has been working incredibly hard. And the Is he kidding? Yeah, I think he's doing a bit. For all the marbles, and with a little encouragement from his wife. Crazy. Is his wife wearing footbag earrings after Labor Day? Tacky. But slowly, Sebastian builds a small lead. And Could somebody dry this? For the match. Music courtesy of Los Lonely Boys. Oh my God, he footbagged Kenny. You. To Sebastian Verde, the new king of singles footbag. You got the single part right. Beating Kenny is always... Seth Green researching his role as a French footbagger. World's the most time. I can't ask for a better place to win it. My family was there. The they did not know that I did this. So it's a good first time. You know? But just remember, hey! no how good you get with a footbag, one fact is undeniable. You're going to die alone? He always wins. You know, watching that last footbag segment gave Jason and me a great idea for a movie. Here's the pitch. A young rebel of a teenager, we're thinking Kevin Bacon, moves from the big city to a small town. A town that's ruled by the puritanical preachings of a minister on a mission to ban all beanbag-related sports from the youth culture in his parish. And it takes a determined Kevin Bacon to set this town free again. Free to footbag anytime they want. And we call the movie Footloose. I think it's got a shot. More cheap seats after this. Games. But first, it's time to learn a little bit more about our unbelievable host, Dan Moriarty. And before you have time to say, I don't care, we're going to ask you, do you care? Just the facts. Do you care? Do you care that Dan Moriarty played a liquor store clerk in the James Woods movie, The Boost? Do you care that Dan Moriarty played a bartender in the Alyssa Milano movie, Little Sister? Do you care that Moriarty played a hockey player in the Rob Lowe movie, Class? And who could forget the legendary hockey scenes from the movie, Class? They were unbelievable. Sports! The Knights of the Round Table were renowned for their bravery and skill. And these fake story, knights are renowned for their knowledge of comic books and message boards. The same noble qualities with a real flair for the dramatic. Oh, out-of-work actors, great. Peter Jackson's birthday party? Hear ye, hear ye. Please don't finish it. All right. And Adenveldt send greetings unto the populace of the known... Bad baby. And invite Good all baby. to join in the seventh annual Estrella War. I'd rather see the Estrada Wars. Okay, that's two minutes for high sticking. War is to be held, then Sir Gaston will surely be in the middle of it. If he's done with his shift at Kinko's. The greatest knights in the kingdom of Cade. And one of the biggest nerds in the city of Scottsdale. Of that kingdom against the dark forces of Adenveldt. Dark forces? Does Bill Frist fight for Adenveldt? Sir Gaston is the alter ego of Chris Gilman. Which doesn't seem creepy at all. One of the 40,000 members of the SCA, the Society for Creative Anachronisms. Anachronism is something that's out of place, time related. Just like the Rolling Stones. A group of people who. Stop hitting me. Ow. Seriously, cut it out. Knighthood is achieved by. That hairstyle is certainly an anachronism. But by your chivalry. Your honor. I didn't know Knights of the Round Table shopped at Pearl Vision Center. Crafts, dancing, singing. In the Ow, stop it. Ow, to make it idiot. Kill, you must Don't, Mom. A strong Ow, arm ow, God. Results in a wound, and the knight then forfeits the use. Oh, it's of just a flesh wound. The knights fight for points, for their kingdom, and for the honor of their fair lady. Whom they are each paying $200 an hour to be there. 
It's hard to believe that this whole thing started because someone hit Sir Gaston with an inside pitch. Deadly son, each man wearing armor that weighs at least 60 pounds. So basically, it's Dungeons and Dragons, but with more cardio. I shall destroy you with this giant wiffle ball bat. Sadly, they have better armor than our troops in Iraq. Cade cannot withstand the continuous blows handed out by Adenveldt, and so is forced to accept defeat. If only they could accept the fact that Xena was canceled. What? There were no saxophones in medieval times. Now that's some creative anachronism. Gaston and his men suffer their fate with dignity. Sir David Sanborn on the sax. What just happened out there? Is you embarrassed awesome? yourself and your family? <laughs> the guy knocked me down on the bush and asked me to yield. And I said, no, I'm not going to yield. You got to kill me. <laughs> and then we laughed about that for a while. And then he killed me. Uh, I figured, yeah, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> not funny. Gaston prepares to return to his other self. The Chris Gilman in him knows that this weekend in the Arizona desert has forever enriched his life. But the Sir Gaston in him knows that it's back to TV dinners in Battlestar Galactica. Back in time to a simpler era, a time when the ideas of chivalry and honor were more than just words. They were ideas. OK, memo to the unbelievable sports people. Just because you add in some dramatic music, the medieval games still aren't Braveheart. You know, though, I can't believe how committed these guys are. How do they have the time? Well, it's interesting that you say that, because I've called in a medieval knight reenactor. You can ask him yourself. Hello, Sir Aglavel. Greetings, brothers of Stla. Much gratitude for your having it me here. Uh, tis it our pleasure. Can I get you anything like a water or red bull? Ah, no, my liege. For I have my own goblet, my own goblet of mead. Wow. I've got to say, I'm actually really impressed with how committed you are to your character. Ah, yes. Uh, it is the code of the knight to follow the oath that he has sworn to uphold. For there is nothing more. I beg your pardon. Hello? Yeah? All right, we'll just TiVo it. OK, but don't, no, 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 don't erase License to Grill. I haven't watched it yet. Are right, you going to Program Manager? All right, why don't we just go, go to, to Break, program OK? Program Manager. Let's go to Break. Sweetie, we've gone through this. Program Manager. Why is this so difficult? Hey, welcome back to Cheap Seats. We've got one more segment of unbelievable sports for you to watch, and you're not going to want to miss it. Then we shall defend our honor. The battlefields of Corinth shall be stained crimson with the blood of the infidel. OK, I'm sorry. Sir Aglavel, I thought our interview was over. Do you want to share something else with no, the no, audience? No, no, no. I'm on Bluetooth. I got a conference call with the other knights of the uh, round table of Orkney. Yeah. Well, then, who dareth besmirch the reputation of Lady Amadaya? Hey, do you guys have Wi-Fi? I need to book a flight. No, no go. No, Let's get back to more oh, unbelievable Steve. sports. Oh, hold on, Steve. No, 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 no. Millions of people all over the world love to play hockey. Millions. So what happens if you want to play, but you can't skate? Well, here in Eugene, Oregon, we found a solution to this non-existent problem. The answer is a broom. Well, not this kind. <laughs> Actually, it wasn't that funny. This may be a hockey rink. It is. These guys aren't playing hockey. They're not. It's a unique local sport called broom ball. Broom ball is played on it. Why are they interviewing Vinny Testaverde? Tom Thaden is one of the best broom ball players in America. And one of the worst hockey players in his high school. Shoes. You've got a, a ball that's the size of a size two soccer ball. And a bunch of guys who are chock full of charisma like me. Hanson Sports have come all the way from St. Paul, Minnesota to play here in Eugene, Oregon. It's raining in Oregon? That's weird. Ball challenge. I hate this stupid bag. Of eight of the most competitive teams in the country is here. Some might call it the Elite Eight. Others, the entire league. They're good. A lot of speed, a lot of size. And a lot of bristles in their brooms. Yeah, best in the country. You can't just go out there and say you're the best or have somebody say you're the best. Yet. Of course you can. See Tara Owens. This day, it doesn't look like anyone is weak. I can say better than that by hitting Control S. Rounds, winning their quarterfinal game against Team Oregon, 16 zip. But in Team Oregon's defense, they were using dustbusters. 
Good broom. Sweet broom. Way to broom. Nice broom. Good broom. Way to broom. Nice broom. And sweet broom. Which Hanson Sports will face another highly regarded team from Minnesota. These guys. At the beginning of the second half, the play gets fast and furious and a lot more physical. But still no skating. Take that, broom boy. Get him a dustpan. The Flames try to catch fire, but Hansen ices them down. Just when you think Moriarty is out of puns, bam, he hits you with a double shot. He's that wonderful. In overtime, the team. Oh, great. Overtime. Instead of five, and to make it even more exciting, we've replaced the brooms with AK 47s. Whoever is ahead when five minutes is up wins. What would it mean to go back to Minnesota with this victory? This would be huge. Room ball or The cameras are here for them. Everything the limelight's on them. For us to go back and win this would be the greatest. Even greater than the time Gary Gaetti hit on my girlfriend at the Mall of America. Eventually, they are assessed a two minute penalty for delay of game. Every player on that ice should be assessed a penalty for delay of adulthood. The Flames are in danger of being snuffed out. How does Moriarty do it? A slim opening appears, and number 99, Joey Landino, the great one, runs the ball down the side. Ah, uh, this reminds me of all those times Wayne Gretzky would run the ball down the side. Shot, and unbelievably, it bounces in off the sliding Fred Clifford. If this was in Columbia, that Hanson player would be dead by now. Brian Kenny's already working on this guy's You Can't Blame. But number 77, Stuart Hansen, quickly evens the score. Wait, it's not over? Half minutes remain to play. Then a minute later, Ira Hackner takes a wild... Ira Hackner, classic sports name. ...actually goes in. Hansen is up three... I think the crowd is just the University of Oregon JV hockey team waiting to practice. The clock is down to 10 seconds. Sweet, it's over. An amazing diving shot. Joey Landino ties the score. Do you believe in Landinos? Yes! Sends the championship game into double overtime. Double overtime. Three to three. Yay. Overtime. Forget about it. Now it's a 15 minute sudden death. First one is. But here's the catch. Only one player from each team is on the ice, and they're both blindfolded. Hansen makes another assault. That's the last thing America needs. Another Hansen assault. Twice. There's a mad scramble after the ball. Joe Landino passes. The great Landino. Clear. He winds up, and it's all over. They still can't skate, right? Right. Here's my question. If there's a sweep in a broom ball series, as a fan, do you bring a broom? Nope. Swiffer. Wet? Is that even a question? No, but this is. Should we give out some cheapies? Cheapy for biggest footbag? Who else? Moriarty. I mean, come on. What a footbag and footbagger. Footbag and a right he is. Cheapy for best anachronistic group? I could go with the Society for Creative Anachronism, but I think I gotta go with the Hickey Chicks for setting the women's movement back in this country about 50 years. Well, that's our show. Guys, and I'm sorry. I, I feel like such a fraud. Hey, come on, man. You know you're just a reenactor. We're fine with that. What, what are you talking about? I'm Skyping with my peeps right now. Are we in your shot? Yeah. Should we get out of your shot? Yeah, get out. Come on. I'm sorry. Oh, 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 oh. You guys are being rude, all right? Now get out. I'm Skyping with some people. Uh -huh.